Hello and welcome to a lesson on factors and prime factorization. So we've actually mentioned factors before. If you recall, when we're looking at a problem like 3 times 4 equals 12, we say that 3 and 4 are factors that multiply to a product of 12. So when we multiply two numbers to make an, another number, to find a product of a number, we call the numbers that we're multiplying together factors of the result. So again, uh, we say 3 and 4 are factors and they multiply to a product of 12 for this particular example. Okay, so we can also um, say that 3 times 4 is what we call a factorization of 12. It just means that it's a pair of numbers that we could multiply to make 12, and in fact there are a few different two-number factorizations of 12. So for instance, we could multiply 1 times 12 to make 12. We would call that a two-number factorization. We could say 1 and 12 are factors of 12. Um, we could multiply 2 times 6 to make 12. So again, that would be a two-number factorization of 12, or 2 and 6 are factors of 12. And then the pair that we looked at just a moment ago, which was 3 times 4. So 3 times 4 is another two-number factorization of 12, or 3 times 4 are factors of 12. Okay? Now, um, because those are the only three existing two-number factorizations of 12, there aren't any other whole numbers that we can multiply to make 12, we can say that all of the factors of 12 are on that list. So all of the factors of 12 would include 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 6, and 12. So those are all of the numbers um, that we would include on the list of factors of 12, and what you'll notice is that each of those numbers divides evenly into 12. So 12 divided by 1 is 12, 12 divided by 2 would be 6, 12 divided by 3 would be 4, 12 divided by 4 would be 3, 12 divided by 6 would be 2, and 12 divided by 12 is 1. So also notice that a factor divides evenly into a number. So a factor of a number divides the number evenly. So we have a pair of factors to multiply to make a number, and we could call that a factorization, and factors also divide evenly into a number. Okay, so let's just practice finding some factors. If I said to find all of the factors of a number, probably the easiest way to do it, or uh, I guess this is kind of opinion-based, but one of the ways to do it that is effective is to list out all of the two-number factorizations. So, for example, if we were finding the uh, factors of 20, I would take 20 and divide it by 1 first, and 1 goes in 20 times, so 1 times 20 is a two-number factorization. And then I could divide it by 2, and 2 goes in 10 times, so 2 times 10 is another pair. Now 3 doesn't go in evenly, but 4 does. 4 goes in 5 times, so there's another pair. And then if I go to the next number, I get 5, which I already have in my other list. So that tells me that I can stop, because then I'm going to just start recycling uh, my list again. So if these are all of the two number factorizations, then I've captured all of my factors on the list. So all factors of 20 would include 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. Okay? And then uh, let's try that again for 15. 15 doesn't have as many options, so that's kind of nice. Obviously, 1 is going to divide in 15 times. 2 does not divide into 15, but 3 does 5 times. 4 does not go in. And then 5 goes in, but that's going to be repeating an, a pair that I already have on my list. So again, I can stop, which means those are going to be my only two number factorizations. And those show me all of my factors. So I could say all of my factors include the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 15. Okay, and I've got one more here. And if you're feeling good about this, feel free to pause and give this one a try. So we're going to try to find all the factors of 24. So 1's going to go in 24 times. 1 times 24 is a pair. Uh, 2 goes in 12 times, so there's another pair. 3 goes in 8 times, so there's another pair. 4 is going to go in 6 times. Uh, 5 doesn't go in. 6 goes in 4 times, but again, we're going to start repeating. And so that is going to be the end of that list. So all of my factors of 24 
all of my factors include the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. So notice when I'm listing them out, I'm going this way with the list. Okay, and there they are, captured all of my factors. Now some of those factors are prime numbers, and some of those factors are composite numbers, and it's important for us to know the difference between those two. So a prime number is a number with exactly two factors. A prime number, again, it has exactly two factors, and it, the only two factors will have to be the number one and itself. So a number is prime if it is only divisible by one in itself, or its only factors are one in itself. Okay, so for instance, if I started making a list in my whole numbers, or actually natural numbers technically, um, of numbers that are only divisible by one in themselves, that would include one, two, three, five, seven. Notice I skipped a couple, so I skipped four because four has other factors like two. Um, I also skipped six in here because six is divisible by two and three and not just one and itself. Okay, and then I skipped a bunch in here. I skipped eight and I skipped nine and I skipped ten because this is two and four and then three and three or two and five. As soon as we have something other than one in itself, it's not a prime number. So if I go back to my list like 11, the only numbers that multiply to make 11 are one and 11, or the only numbers that multiply to make 17 are one and 17. So this is a list of prime numbers, and this list knows a little dot, dot, dot. It does continue on. Um, I just can't list the numbers forever, so I gave you the first handful there. Now if a number isn't prime, then we call it a composite number. It's composed of other factors. So a composite number is a number that is not prime, meaning it has factors other than one in itself. Okay, It is composed of factors other than one in itself. So if I started my same list here, remember I got one, two, and three, and I skipped four, four goes over here. Then I had five, and I skipped six, six goes over here. Then I got seven over here, and I skipped eight, nine, and ten, eight, nine, and ten go over here. Because again, all these numbers that are composite have factors other than one and themselves. Okay, so let's practice just identifying here. I got a few numbers for us to look at that aren't on those lists. 60, prime or composite? So prime means only divisible by one and itself. So one times 60, is that the only pair of factors? Well, no, I know that two is gonna go in uh, 30 times, or that three is gonna go in 20 times, or that four is gonna go in 15 times, or five is gonna go in 12 times, and that six is gonna go in 10 times. So there's a whole bunch of factors. So this is definitely composite. Okay, it's got a whole bunch of factors there. And let's see, 29, let's see, 1 goes in 29 times, but not divisible by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, no, nothing. Nothing is going to go into 29 but 1 in itself, and so this is going to be a prime number. And then if we shoot over here to 105, well, 1 times 105 is a pair. Um, 2 doesn't go in, but 3 goes into this number. 3 is going to go in 35 times, and you might be looking at that wondering how I knew. I'm going to show you some tricks for that in just a minute. Um, but 3 goes in 35 times. Um, 5 is going to go in 21 times, which means 7 is going to go in. 7 is going to go in 15 times, and I think that's going to be it, but in either case, as soon as we past the two number factorization of one in itself, we knew that this was going to be a composite number. Okay, and just to reconnect here to what we were just talking about, if I said um, to list all of the factors, then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them here. So if I said give me all of the factors, there they are. Now what if I asked you just to tell me the composite factors? And what if I asked you to just give me the um, prime factors? So all of the factors are on this list. This is all of the factors here. 
But if I said which ones are prime and which ones are composite, we should be able to distinguish. I'm going to do that with a highlighter in just a second. So if I said, what are all the prime factors of 105? Well, 1 is prime, 3 is prime, 5 is prime, 7 is prime. So my prime factors are those ones that I've highlighted in green. And then my composite factors are the ones that are divisible by other numbers, like 15 is a composite number um, because 3 and 5 go into it, and so is 21, and so is 35, and so is 105. Those are all divisible by other numbers. Okay, so you should be able to list all of the factors, and then making that list, you should also be able to tell me which ones of the factors are prime and which are composite. All right, let's try some, oh, before I sh want to show you the next piece, um, I mentioned how do I know when I'm looking at a number like 105, how did I know that it was divisible by 3 rather quickly? Um, there are a few, actually there's a bunch of rules, but there are a few that really come in handy. So like you should be able to know, or you should be able to look at a number and know if it's going to be divisible by 2. Hopefully we know this one, but a number is going to be divisible by 2. That means we can cut a number in half if it's an even number. And what does it mean for the number to be even? Well, it means that it ends in a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Those are all evens. So if our number ends in a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, then we can divide it evenly by 2. We can evenly cut that thing in half. Okay, so that's one that we probably knew. Now the divisibility rule for 3 is one that we may not know, but it's helpful, and it helped me on that 105. Um, so a number is going to be divisible by 3 if the sum of its digits is divisible by 3. So for example, that 105 that I was looking at, that's kind of a big number. Without actually dividing it, um, how do I know it's divisible by 3? Well, if I added the 1 and the 0 and the 5, the digits, I get 6. And because 6 divides by 3, that means 105 divides by 3. It's mind-blowing if you haven't seen that before, okay? But that is a trick. So if you can quickly add those digits and know that the sum is divisible by 3, that means your number will be divisible by 3, okay? Um, let's see if the number is divisible by 4. I don't know if, if you use this this rule very often or if you've heard of this one, but if the last two digits if the last two digits are divisible by 4, that means your entire number is divisible by 4. So like uh, 5112, for example, that's a gigantic number. But if long as my last two digits are divisible by 4, then that entire number will be divisible by 4. So since 12 is divisible by 4, 5,112 will be divisible by 4. So that's kind of a cool one. A number is going to be divisible by 5. Uh, this is probably a rule that you know. This is one that tends to stick in the memory. Um, if our number ends in a 0 or a 5, then we can divide it evenly by 5. Um, divisibility by 6 probably don't know this one, but it makes sense. If the number divides by 2 and 3, it will divide by 6. So if it's even and the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, if both of those rules apply, then it will divide by 6. Uh, if a number is divisible by 9, this one is similar to 3. If the sum of the digits is divisible by 9, then my entire number will divide by 9. And then the other one that's kind of helpful to know is when, and we actually probably know this one, a number is divisible by 10 if it ends in a zero. Okay, now I don't, you know, want you to stick all these in your memory and clog up space there. If you think they're going to be helpful, um, then by all means hold on to them. I, I tend to use uh, for sure the 2, the 5, the 10, and then I, I also use the 3. Uh, sometimes I forget about the 4, the 6, the 9, but I guess the more you can commit to memory, the easier it will um, make things for you division-wise, but whatever you have room for, okay? So those are helpful divisibility rules. And they're helpful not in just dividing numbers, but in doing something called finding the prime factorization of a number. So the prime factorization of a number is a factorization. That means we have numbers that we could multiply to, to produce our number. Um, like remember, we said that uh, 3 times 4 equals 12. We called that a factorization of 12. So 
If it's a prime factorization, that means all of the factors in that product are prime numbers. So all of the factors are prime. And the prime factorization for a number can be found using what we call a factor tree. So using a factor tree, we continually break down any composite factors until everything we're left with is a prime number. And it's helpful to know that the product of our prime factorization should equal our original number. And if we have any repeated factors, we want to use our exponential notation, which we'll review with an example. And because multiplication is commutative, remember that property? The commutative property says we can change the order in which we multiply and still get the same answer. Um, so it doesn't matter in which order we have our factors. As long as all of them are prime, then they will make up our prime factorization. Okay, so we're going to try to find the prime factorization of these numbers. 80, for instance. When we're going to make a prime factorization, we use a factor tree, and we call it a factor tree because we're going to break our number into factors using branches. So what we want to do is think of a pair of numbers that multiplies to make 80. So any numbers, it doesn't really matter where you start. Let's say the easiest numbers for you to think of were 8 and 10. Now 8 is still composite and 10 is still composite, which means we want to take this tree down another branch. Okay, so 8, for instance, I know could be a pair of factors like 2 and 4. And 10, again, is composite. I know 10 is the result of multiplying 2 and 5. Now, once I'm down to prime numbers, like 5 is prime, 2 is prime, and 2 is prime, I would stop. Those would be the ends of those branches. But since 4 is composite, I need to continue to break down the 4. 4 breaks down to 2 times 2. So we want to keep breaking down our numbers until everything that's left is prime. So once all the bottoms our, the bottoms of our branches are prime numbers, we have our prime factorization. So our prime factorization for this number, I'm going to call it PF. Um, I'm going to abbreviate prime factorization as PF. That's going to equal, in this case, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. That's 1, 2, 3, 4 of those times 5. Or, using our appropriate exponential notation for that repeated factor, we're going to say that it's 2 to the 4th power times 5. That would be the most efficient way to write that. Or if you wanted to say 5 times 2 to the 4th power, that would be fine. And again, if we multiplied all of that out, we, we should get back to our original number. So let's just confirm that 2 raised to the 4th power multiplied by 5 does in fact take us back to 80. So that would be the prime factorization for 80. Okay, And again, it doesn't matter what factors you pick, so let me just show you. Let's say when you were looking at 80 that, um, I don't know, Maybe you, you use 2 and 40 instead. You're still going to end up with the same answer. So 40 would break down to 2 and 20, maybe. And then we could say that 20 becomes 2 and 10. And we could say 10 becomes 2 and 5. And there it is again. 1, 2, 3, 4 of those 2s and 5. Okay? So you get the same answer either way. Or whatever pair of factors you use, just... It, it branches out like a tree, so we call this factor tree. It, it'll take us to the same result, okay? So let's try 175. 175, um, maybe the easiest number to see that it divides by is 5, since it ends in a 5. And how many times is 5 going to go in? Well, let's see. 175 divided by 5 is 35. So I could say this is 5 times 35. Now, 5 is a prime number, so I can stop that one. But 35, I can still break down to 5 times 7. And that's prime, and that's prime, which means we're done. We can say that the prime factorization for 175 is 5 times 5 times 7. Or using our exponential notation, 5 squared times 7. And again, you can confirm if you put in 5 squared times 7, it does in fact take you back to 175. Okay, well, let's try this again. 117, that's a tougher number here. 
Um, I know two is not going to go in, it's not even, but I know three is going to go in. If I add the one and the one and the seven, I get nine. And since that sum is divisible by three, my number will divide by three. And actually nine will go in too, because that sum divides by nine. So I'm going to use three. Three is going to go into 117 how many times? 117 divided by three is 39. And 39, and again, three is prime, so I can stop that one. But 39 is three times 13, and three is prime, and so is 13, so that's gonna be the end of that one. <coughs> Excuse me, so our prime factorization here, three times three times 13, or three squared times 13. All right, moving right along. And feel free at any point if you want to um, try these out on your own to give it a shot. Let's see, 33 is going to be 3 times 11, and that's it. Okay, 3 is prime, and so is 11, and so we're going to say our prime factorization here is just 3 times 11. Kind of nice when it's short like that, right? Or 84. Let's try this one. 84. Let's see, I know 4 is going to go in. I know 2 is going to go in because it's even. So whatever is jumping out at you, let's say you use 4. 4 is going to go in 21 times, and these are both composite. So 4 I can break down again. 4 is 2 times 2, and that's going to be the end of those branches. But 21 we can say is 3 times 7, and those are primes. That's the end of that. So our prime factorization here is 2 times 2 times 3 times 7, or again using our exponential notation, it's 2 squared times 3 times 7. Okay, so I've got one more example. Again, if you feel confident, then pause the video and give it a try. This is a bit of a larger number, but I think you can do it. So pause it, try it out, and then come back and see if you got the same thing I'm getting here. Otherwise, let's see. Uh, 360. I know 10 is going to go in because it ends in a 0. So let's try 10 times 36. Both composite. 10 can break down to 2 and 5. So we can stop there. 36 we could say is 6 times 6. Those are both composite. 6 we could say is 2 times 3. And again, this 6 becomes a 2 times 3. And since those are all prime, that's where we can stop. So this prime factorization is going to be, let's see, we've got one, two, three twos in there. So two times two times two. And I've got two threes. And I have a five. And so all together, it's going to be two cubed times three squared times five. And that was kind of a long one, so I just want to confirm if I put in 2 to the third power times 3 to the second power times 5, I should get back to 360, and I do. All right, so there it is. Uh, prime factorization, prime numbers, composite numbers, and factors. It's a lot to take in, but I think you've got enough to get going on your practice assignment. So give it a shot, and as always, if you need some extra help, then feel free to reach out. All right, till next time, take care.